Hey everybody, welcome back to the ECG channel. My name is Reed. Don't forget to download the PDF of today's ECG down uh, in the description below. And feel free to like this video if you enjoy the content and subscribe to the channel if you want, want to see more. So let's jump into it. This is a fun one. So when you first look at this one, right, when I look at the force of this ECG, it looks a little crazy, but you know, let's reassure ourselves there is some kind of organization to this madness, right? So if I kind of come down here to V5, what I'll notice is I've got a regular kind of a, um, this is in a regular rhythm that occurs in some type of regular pattern, right? You notice immediately I've got these groups. So I've got these groups of kind of two beats with a pause, two beats with a pause, two beats with a pause, right? And those beats, if I zoom in and look a little closer, we have a narrow beat, and then we have the next beat is wide, right? And it kind of alternates, narrow and wide. And it does that throughout the entirety of the rhythm. My narrow beats, you can see, has a nice P wave that starts it off. And so it makes me think that at least these groups are starting off with a some type of um, sinus rhythm, right? And it makes sense if there's a narrow, complex rhythm being conducted, being, being conducted through the AV node. And so let's figure out what those initial beats are, and then let's figure out what that second beat is, and if we can kind of work through that. So... First beat here is a narrow complex rhythm with P waves. Let's take a look at the P wave morphology of those beats. You can look at up here in lead one, you can see my P waves are upright in lead one. And if you go to AVF, they're upright in AVF. So it tells me that these are sinus P waves. So that's good. If you wanted to get, you know, we know our sinus node has like a typical rhythm right to it. Well, if you wanted to get the average rate, you could get the rate of this QRS to this QRS and you can multiply it by two. Or you could um, kind of count this entire strip and multiply it by six, because you know this ECG is a 10 second rhythm. I'm just gonna do this and multiply it by two and get our average rate. So we've got 300, 150, 175, 60, 50, that's like 43, so maybe we'll say 40 beats per minute, so 40 times two. So we've got a rhythm that is roughly 80 beats per minute, okay? So we've, so we've got sinus P waves. Let's look at our AV node. Let's look at our AV node function here. We've got PR interval. My PR interval looks like it's maybe 160 milliseconds, right? Maybe four small boxes, so it's normal, right? And if we look through, every P wave that I see conducts to a QRS in the same fashion. I don't see any P waves throughout these pauses that are not being conducted, right? So I kind of search through, I scan through. I can look at that narrow QRS morphology, right? I see that the QRS is upright in lead one. That QRS is also upright in AVF. Tells me that my axis of depolarization is down to the left, which is good. I've got good R wave progression, right? Maybe a little bit late here. V3, but we get good upright in V4, so it could just be lead placement between V2 and V3 if I had to if I had to guess. I look at my QT interval. I would say my QT interval looks appropriate, right? This T wave here does not seem to be very slurry or long, and I'm not going to really take the time to calculate it right now. But you can. And so um, now we're going to look for pathological Q waves or S or T wave changes that make me think of ischemia, right? We think of if we have premature beats, sometimes it could be triggered by an angry myocardium. And I scan through the anatomical leads and I don't see any. So all clear. You know, the one thing I noticed as I was going through that is if you look in V1, if you look at those P waves, they're kind of a little bit more negative than we would like them to be, right? And if I look closely, this is V1 P wave right here. You can see that I... My P wave is large enough to fit a one millimeter by one millimeter small box inside of it. And we know that that is enough to say that we have left atrial enlargement. I right, so remember that's the criteria for left atrial enlargement. If you can fit a one millimeter by one millimeter box in the negative portion of V1, right? We know that that, that criteria exists because V1 is measuring from here on the chest wall. And we know that the left atria, which is right here, depolarizes with this. So the SA node fires off within the, the right atria and depolarizes the right atria. 
And then we've got this really cool bundle of cells called Bachmann's bundle. That's a little tube, essentially, of cells that send that signal to the left atria. And the left atria depolarizes away from V1. So V1 has a negative P wave, but if it grows largely negative, negative enough to fit a one millimeter by one millimeter box inside of it, then we get left atrial enlargement. That's what we see. Otherwise, I'm pretty happy with how this rhythm is looking um, other than these funky beats. And so now we need to figure out what kind of beats are these funky early beats. So I come and I notice that my the width of the beats is wide. So I think this is either a one premature ventricular contraction or two premature atrial contraction with aberrancy, right? Like a functional bundle branch block. And so my job is to figure that out. So I like to look, and V1 is a great lead. This is V1 right here. v one's a good lead to do that because the T waves are a little bit more broad and flat compared to the rest of them. And if you look closely, I look for P waves that are going on anywhere in that T wave or ST segment. I don't see any. So that confirms my diagnosis that these are premature ventricular contractions in a pattern of ventricular bigeminy, meaning that those QRSs that are generated by the premature ventricular contractions are occurring every other beat. And so let's put this all together, and what do we have? We have a sinus rhythm at roughly 80 beats per minute. We have left atrial enlargement, and we have premature ventricular contractions in a pattern of ventricular bigeminy. So I hope this helps. Um, and if you have any questions about the CCG, feel free to put them down in the comments below. Um, if not, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you enjoy and want to see more of this content, and uh, we'll see you on the next CCG video. Have a great rest of your day.